Welcome to Takes One to No One, our first hub chat recorded and streamed live from King's College London at the end of February 2015. Our focus was on how and why arts organisations might want to involve young people in their work to build young adult audiences. We invited panellists to Tenda Musasengwa from YouthSite and Emily Kerr from the Roundhouse to share their expertise with Julia Payne, director of the hub. This hub chat is an hour long and broken up into segments. We discuss some key questions with our guest panellists, interspersed with some pre-recorded footage with young people at the Roundhouse. The Hub Chat is part of Joining the Dots, our support programme for entrepreneurial artists, promoters and others working in independent music in England. The Hub's motto is Be Curious and Generous and Joining the Dots is built on this premise that we'll all be a bit smarter if we share with each other what we know. So please do get in touch if you've any comments or things to share as a result of watching. If ever you want evidence or an example of a building that young people feel totally at home in, totally feel like they own, then I would say that the Roundhouse is is that building. Um, I went down there last week to talk to Naomi Sine Thomas, who's one of the uh, youth advisory board members at the Roundhouse, and I wanted to know about how she became involved in the Roundhouse and what uh, what music organisations need to do if they're keen to recruit young people to work with them. So here she is watching, uh, talking to Cecilia Knapp, who is the youth, uh, youth Engagement Officer at the Roundhouse. Hi, I'm Cecilia and I work at the Roundhouse as the Youth Engagement Officer. Um, so I sit within the Youth Engagement team um, and part of my job is to chair the Youth Board. So I'm going to introduce you to a member of the Youth Board, Naomi. Hi, I'm Naomi and I currently sit on the Youth Board with Cecilia and I also do a number of courses here at the Roundhouse. So, um, Naomi, first of all, what motivated you to get involved in the Roundhouse? So, the thing that got me involved was I was doing a course in Newham, a summer project, and they came, the Roundhouse came to our course and recruited a few of us to come over here and do the Dramathon, which was a 12-hour drama project. Um, so they literally poached us over from Newham and that's how I got involved. And have you done lots of other projects here as well? Uh, at the Roundhouse, yeah. yeah I've done a, like a massive range of projects. So, yeah. Cool. And so after doing those projects, what motivated you to get involved in the Youth Board? I think because I was doing so many different projects, I wanted to be more involved with how they were organised and how we got feedback from those projects. Um, I think there was one project I did where they asked us for feedback and I thought that was a really good idea and I wanted to get involved with that more regularly. So, yeah. Cool. So why do you think young people um, might want to get involved in an arts venue or music venue such as the Roundhouse or other venues like that? I think when you're quite young, say under 16, it's a really good place to just hang out and make friends and spend your summer holidays and half terms. Um, but now that I'm in my 20s, I find that it's good to um, gain more experience in terms of getting a career. Um, so there's projects I've done through here where I've been able to be mentored by people who work for the BBC and make our own programmes, build up a portfolio, so those kind of things, yeah. Um, and just the last question, what do you think organisations need to include um, or emphasise to make what they're offering compelling to young people? Um, I think there's lots of different ways they can do it. So here at the Roundhouse, um, one of the projects that they, one of the festivals they do is a spoken word festival called The Last Word. Mm -hmm. And for that, um, as part of their marketing, they ran a project alongside it called The Street Team. And I was on that and they got us to do the marketing for the project, um, which meant that they had a group of people who were their target audience who could work on um, something. So they got a benefit out of it. But then we also gained a lot of experience in marketing. And if I ever need a reference for a marketing job, I now have someone that I can ask. Um, and then this week we're doing, I'm volunteering as part of the Roundhouse Rising Festival. Mm -hmm. So um, at the moment I'm helping with set up and talking to people and finding out how it's run with the aim of next year the festival should be um, completely run by young people. So I would say that arts organisations, if they get people involved where you really have an influence and um, can gain experience from it, then young people will want to be involved with their projects. Brilliant, thank you so much. Great, so hopefully you've all managed to uh, have, a have a look at that video. So I've been joined uh, in the studio this afternoon by uh, our two panellists for this afternoon. On my right is Emily Kerr, who's marketing manager for the Roundhouse's youth music program, youth program. Youth program. Right, isn't it? So thank you very much, Emily, for coming down this afternoon, for joining us. And next to Emily, we have Tatenda Masengwa, who is client services director 
at Youthsite, which is a marketing agency that specialises in working with young people. Yeah, yeah more market research and insight agency. Great. Yeah. So thank you so much, both of you, for coming down this afternoon. Really, really appreciate it. So today's Hub Chat is all about young audiences and more specifically about how organisations and why music organisations should work with young people, might want to work with young people to help build those audiences. You've obviously got two very different sort of sets of experience here. You know, somebody who's working in a music organisation, somebody who's working in a research agency context. I wonder if we could draw on those experiences, first of all, um, and I wanted to ask you to do two things. First of all, talk about how you involve young people in the work that you do. And then secondly, also, if you could give us some thoughts on why you think, assuming that you do those, why you think that it's good for music organisations to involve young people if they're trying to build young audiences. Emily, could we, could we start with you? Yeah, sure. So, um, obviously, the Round House is a big music venue. People know us for big rock gigs that we put on. Um, but we do a lot of work with young people as well. And we have a programme for 11 to 25 year olds where they can come and gain skills in creative um, areas, including music. Uh, we have a range of studios where young people can book out really cheaply, practice their bands, things like that. Um, so alongside kind of trying to get young people involved in the coming to see work, we're also giving them the opportunity to pick up skills and, and teach them things as well. And I think that's why you were saying about how it really feels like Roundhouse is a natural home for young people. We really benefit from that. I think it's not an intimidating place to come to because there's so many young people hanging out at that time, you know, just kind of getting stuck in and it feels like it's their building. Mm. Um, can, so, you, can you tell me a bit about the Youth Advisory Board? Yes. How you, how you work with them? So it's kind of really in our kind of our brand and our values and everything about the Roundhouse, we sort of, the thing we always say is that young people are at the heart of our organisation and any kind of project or decision that is made is it should involve young people. Um, and like the key way we do that is through our Youth Advisory Board. Um, we have a group of uh, 16 to 25 year olds who meet every month and will um, feed into the programming decisions that we make. Um, and general kind of decisions around the studios. Um, and two of the, those, um, that board will sit on our general board of trustees. So they're literally feeding right in to wow. the, um, you know. So it's not just lip service, it's no. properly, properly happening. Yeah. Fantastic. Tatenda, could you talk to me a little bit about the way that you work with young people? Yes, yeah, sure. So uh, we are a full service research agency. So as part of that, uh, we provide insights into the market for government, brands, public policy makers, basically anyone that wants to understand the youth markets. But how we work with young people is a bit different. We actually have the UK's largest youth panel, about 130,000 young people aged about 16 to 30, primarily uh, 16 to 24. And we actually engage with them on a continual basis for research projects. So that can stretch anything from doing quantitative uh, research projects, such as surveys, all the way to focus groups and some full service insights. Well as that. Um, in terms of what we do beyond that, we actually see ourselves more as a collaborative agency. So we like to say we are intermediaries or we help facilitate the process for brands or our clients to work with young people. Um, and for us, this is something that is not something that's just nice to do, but it's actually something we believe is the best way to actually get young people into it. Um, I'm sure you guys know young people are very um, honest and they're very clear about knowing what is honest and what isn't. So for us, involving young people in the process of developing strategies and plans is important to come across authentic if you are a brand or client trying to mm -hmm. actually engage with them, essentially. Um, and that's kind of our ethos and how we do our projects. So yeah, and I love the consultation process. I loved. I was looking uh, after after we spoke. I was looking at the bright young minds yeah. uh, work that you do. Yeah. And what I loved about that was you had these three words: so inspire, hack, and validate. Yeah. And you had this idea around sort of crowdsourcing ideas, and then this idea of sort of stress testing them exactly. through the hack process, which I thought was really interesting. Exactly. So a lot of the clients we work for are some heritage brands, for instance, and sometimes they don't quite know what will work in the space. So the idea behind hacking is sort of retrofitting and testing and seeing if something works with young people and they can actually buy into it. So mm -hmm. that person invariably needs to have young people involved. You can't just go up on a separate site and go and come up with an idea and not test it and see if young people mm -hmm. can actually engage with it. So, mm -hmm. so thinking, obviously, it's very different what you're doing. It's in a market research context. Yeah. What would you, 
is there anything you would say to music organisations, you know, small organisations, stretched resources? Yeah. Do you think it's still a good idea for them to, to, to take elements of what you're doing or to, to build on what Emily's saying that they, they did around the house? Yeah, I think it is. I mean, I understand budgets are constrained, but I think you can still do stuff very much from the ground up and build that buzz and excitement. Ultimately, it's not really about money, it's about getting young people excited about something. And if you find out who you want to talk to and get the right people involved, such as influencers, that isn't necessarily such a hard thing to do. It's just mm. finding the right pockets in, in the market. That makes okay. Sense. Okay. I think potentially, I would say as well, as a kind of you know creative organisation, lots of these smaller venues, they might find it easier yeah, to kind exactly. of get young people involved because yeah. it's not the same ask as a kind of you know marketing agency that say, yeah, "Come yeah. and help us with it." It's almost like, "Oh, you come see our." gigs or you like our bar and hanging out there can get you involved it's more natural yeah yeah, yeah. so okay. maybe you could use that as yeah, yeah, yeah and just picking up on that so what would you say the, the people that are working at the roundhouse people like Naomi who, talk, who was talking earlier what do they gain from being involved in terms of their general experience yeah, yeah. Why, um, why would I'm thinking why would they do that why would they want to come yeah. definitely I think um, I mean there's so many different reasons and I think but I do think it's a really important thing in, in terms of marketing whenever we're trying to what well, any audience you're always thinking what are they actually going to gain out mm. of this um, the roundhouse you're getting a community so we have so many different um, for young people to get involved in our projects or in, you know in insight sessions or anything like that you'll get involved with lots of different exciting people all trying to do their own thing and kind of you see people forming connections um, mm -hmm. poets starting to talk to musicians mm -hmm. starting to work with people with tech knowledge and coming together and form things um, and then we also really try and ensure there's kind of progression rates as well for yeah. young people involved um, whether that is you know our RIAB members, you know, seeing if we can get them performance opportunities. We have mm -hmm. um, an in-house resident artist scheme, which is about 100 of the young people that we've been working with really closely across the last few years, kind of identifying how we can support them and giving them mm -hmm. um, performance opportunities. So um, it's just yeah, making sure that there's, mm -hmm. they're getting some value back in return. And on a really practical level, what kinds of things are they doing? What, how are you involving them? Uh, the, the literal opportunities, um, I guess, in decision-making meetings. Um, we had a session just this week with the design agency and a group of young people where we were actually interrogating branding and language, and they got the opportunity to sort of hang out in cool offices and meet some designers, and one of them's already approached them about work experience. So mm. I guess it's just that access to industry mm. is yeah. really valuable, and yeah. making contacts and networks. Anything that you would Yeah, that's very much what we found. I think... Sometimes in certain situations, there are extrinsic uh, motivations to be involved with young people, such as cash. But actually, we find it's more effective if they can have access to industry contacts and just be involved in something that they don't necessarily get involved in on a day-to-day -day basis, such as working on a project for night or Puma or something like that. So it's quite exciting for them, you know, yeah, yeah. to enjoy be part of that process. Sounds like the two of you should be talking as well about getting so much guys down to Maybe, yeah. Bring <laughs> <Maybe, yeah. laughs> your people together all the time. <laughs> um, so if there's anything that you've heard already today that you'd like to uh, to know a bit more about, if there's anything that you want, any questions that you'd want to direct to Emily or to Tender, then do get in touch with us uh, on Twitter or via the, the showcase panel at the, back, at the, at the side of the page. Um, we're going to head for another short film now. Um, again, last week I, I called up at the Roundhouse. It's a busy week at the Roundhouse. There was a lot going on, wasn't there? So I caught up uh, last week with uh, Troy Bowbank and uh, Zina Salihu, who are two young people who are involved with a Bromley-based organisation called Arts Train. Um, and I met with them and with Abimaro Gunnell, who's one of the Arts Train uh, team, team members, and asked Abimaro to talk to, to Troy and to Zinat about what organisations need to do to make sure that when they work with young people, they get it right. What do they need to do to make that a successful sort of relationship for everyone concerned? Hello, I'm Abby Morrow, and I work for Arts Train, um, which is a music organisation that provides opportunities in music for young musicians. And I'm also a singer-songwriter. So can I find out a little bit more about you? Right. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Troy. I'm an entertainer. I do poetry, music, uh, comedy, and many other things. And I perform at Arts Train, and I'm part of the Arts Train Academy. Hello. Hi, I'm Zenat. I'm also part of the Arts Train Academy. I am a singer, songwriter, rapper, and artist. 
Excellent. So we're going to ask some questions about engaging young people um, a little bit more. Um, so one question I want to ask is, how do you both think um, an organisation can involve young people in planning an event successfully? So how can we involve young people in that planning process successfully? Troy? I think when planning, uh, a, when planning a gig, the gig has to be personal to the performers and to the young people. So maybe starting from the ground up when you're planning a performance or planning a gig with young people would make a difference. Uh, it doesn't want to feel like their involvement is forced, like they're just forced to play on the stage or play at a gig that's already been predetermined for them. Okay. So, um, yeah, maybe starting from the ground up, making sure they have involvement, maybe making sure they can see their own vision in the gig, even if they don't use all the ideas, making sure when it comes to the um, day of the performance that they can say, oh, I had a part in that. So that makes a difference. Yeah. Excellent. So involving young people's ideas from the beginning of the planning process. Yeah. Excellent. Um, Zena, what about you? What do you think? Yeah, I totally agree that um, the young people should have an important role and it shouldn't, because it seems like with um, projects in general for young people, they'll listen to the listen to the young people, but then the, yeah, then the people in charge still decide what should happen. So it's like they've listened to the idea, but they haven't actually taken it on board. They've just, it's just like a noise. Excellent. Thanks, Zinat. So making sure that if you're going to ask young people to be part of that planning process, you actually yeah. use their ideas. Yeah, exactly. Excellent. And anything else that you think that can make that planning a little bit more successful when you're asking young people to be part of it? I think um, maybe offer incentives, for example, um, some kind of training. So if I'm part helping to organise this thing, I could learn some financial skills or something like that so I like I would know that I'm it's not me wasting my time but I'm actually developing my skills for the future Excellent. Excellent. that sounds really good finding opportunities what about you Troy anything else I think similar to what Zena said I think there has to be like an incentive or some advantage that the young people get out of performing so is it going to further their career does it give them a platform to further their fan base or even those back behind the scenes are they gaining like on the job experience that they wouldn't have gained anywhere else like you've got to see if there's advantages from both sides not just the event organizers but also for the young person that you're trying to be involved with so, yeah. thanks so much guys Great, so welcome back. I uh, hope you in, uh, enjoyed that video. They were uh, two, two young people that um, certainly had a lot to say. Uh, we, I think we've got some extra videos from uh, Troy and Zenat uh, that are also on our website as well because we, we, we spent quite a lot of time talking uh, last week. So we heard there from those two about some of the things that they think are the ground rules for making a relationship work really, really well. Um, I wonder what you would say your ground rules are, thinking about what makes the way that you work successful, what the ground rules are for you in terms of making that relationship successful, what, I don't know, maybe your top tips are. Any of you? Who wants to okay, I'll start. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess for us there's kind of two rules I could apply in this context specifically because we are a research agency. The first is not all young people are the same. Uh, we regularly work with clients that assume that all 16 to 24 year olds, all 18 to 24 year olds are the same and you should apply the same rules to all of them. Yeah. And that's that's very wrong. I mean, you wouldn't uh, try and attract, I don't know, people interested in crime in the same way you might attract people interested in sharing. You have to adopt a different approach to that. So for us, uh, we've taken this next step beyond that to actually say that, OK, there are, all, there are these different groups in the youth market. We can identify young people that might be relevant to you and actually involve them in the process of collaboration. So we've developed a methodology uh, called Brighter Minds, which you alluded to before, where we can identify people that are creative, connected, socially active, that you can involve in different stages of the marketing process. So for instance, if you are a brand and you want to come up with new ideas, we can identify creative people and involve them in a collaborative process to come up with new ideas. Whereas if you are uh, someone interested in understanding the impact that a social campaign on the internet may have, we can identify connected people. So that's not rule number one. Not everyone's the same in the youth space. And sometimes they don't like being called young people. That's, that's yeah. another rule. Um, if anybody's got any ideas about how we can not talk about young people by using the term young people, 
tell us. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and then the second thing I would say is just be authentic and honest. I think in the work that we've done, we found that you always will fail if you try and pull the wool over their eyes or try and act as if something you're not. So anything from stretching the way you communicate with them and trying to be too cool, that actually can fail, or the way to you actually involve them in a project or process of the campaign. So it's always about honesty. Okay. Yeah, I think, I mean, probably very much along similar lines. It's, I think in a way, I remember, you know, when I started out working with uh, young people and in organisations that were trying to engage young people and having a bit of a hang up and thinking, oh, I've got to think in a different way now or speak in a different way and I'm to, to, like, oh, how should I write this for young people? And actually a lot of it is just as if you were communicating to anyone, it's sort of mm -hmm. showing that respect. Yeah. Um, young people today are, are amazing and incredibly entrepreneurial and creative. They're having to do more and more for themselves now, mm -hmm. um, pick up skills themselves and I think it's that honesty and mm. not using patronising language and being just, just up front and kind of, again, that, but also balancing that, always making sure you're identifying that there is value for them. Yeah. Um, okay. yeah. We get, you know, asked a lot for kind of, you know, can you, can you get some young people to come to this event or play this? And it's kind of like, well, yes, if there's something in it for them, if mm. they get exposure that's valuable for them, but equally, if not, then you need to pay them because they're artists. And they just because sure. they're a young person doesn't mean that you can you know, yeah, get yeah, a yeah. cheap yeah. thing out of that. So. Yeah. I wanted to pick up something that you mentioned. Yeah. Um, so, and Emily, just to see if it, that this sort of applies to the way that you work with them and maybe other music organisations. You talked about not all young people being the same, yeah. which is obviously, you know, obviously, obviously a given, but if you've got a group of I and mean, what you've managed to do is to sort of divide the young people that you work with into different sort of demographics, I suppose. Yeah, so yeah. I think it's lateral thinkers and creatives. Exactly. And all the, you know, all those. I looked through that trying to think, what would I have been <laughs> years ago when I was looking I at I should say, funny enough, not everyone falls into a group. About 30% of people will be in a group, the rest won't be in a group. So. Right, okay. But that's not to say that you're not special in the group. It's just that <laughs> everyone is special, everyone is special, special. in a way. Um, but thinking about that, do you find that, do you find that you work with different young people on different things depending on what their skills are or their interests are, and is that important? Do you think? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we, uh, I guess we have projects that involve young people um, directly feeding into performances at the Roundhouse at all levels. We've just had, um, or at the moment actually, it's an ongoing uh, project called the Happiness uh, Project, mm. which is working towards a series of performances, uh, bringing together scientists, young people, and performers, and will be uh, a main you know, flagship performance at the Roundhouse. That's um, a lot younger people than maybe some of the, our other projects, and obviously. Uh, 11-year-old will be very different to a 25-year-old. Mm. That's why, I guess, this young people terminology can be really yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, you, you'd you want to flex all the shapings mm. for the group of people you're working with. We were talking the other day, I, I was uh, in a conversation with some people last week at The Guardian, actually, we were doing a podcast about um, uh, the music industry today and how people are making their way and there's a lot of talk obviously about D DIY, yeah. the DIY in the music scene these days and I was talking about actually it's DIO, it's not do it yourself, it's do it ourselves, it's mm -hmm. about getting together a group of people around you who've each got different skills, you know I was that, that teenager who was never going to be in the band but was really good at making t-shirts, yeah. you know, and I could write press releases yeah. and all that sort of stuff. I was the geeky one, you know. So I suppose that's the thing, isn't it, as well? It's about when you're looking to work with young people, it's about recognising that they've got different skills yeah. and different experiences and, and trying to uh, build on those traits. But also, if those are muscles that they might want to develop in a career later on, then it's spotting that and being able to give them those experiences. Yeah. And also being clear to them that they will get those experiences and they will get that benefit. Like, yeah, so being really clear about the benefits exactly. is, is really important. Exactly. I wanted to ask you about money, about this. Obviously, um, people are going to be thinking, marketing agency, <laughs> cash falling out of your pockets, <laughs> you know, entourage arriving with you, compared yeah. to a yeah. music organisation, an arts organisation, which is probably 50 <laughs> down the maybe down the back of the social network. <laughs> Um, I'm stereotyping massively, obviously, <laughs> but you know, doing this kind of thing, does it have to cost a lot of money, Emily? Let's, get, let's start with you. Um, I mean, definitely not for us. In that, we've um, created, I guess, the Roundhouse is this amazing sort of combination of, you know, we don't have to 
pay young people to be there. They want to be there and they really have a massive engagement with mm. our, our brand and the work we do so they want to help and then that makes projects become quite exciting because you're suddenly looking at that opportunity to you know, work with lots of great exciting minds and, and ideas and then wanting to get involved. So I think as long as you know there's that, that value on both sides and you know young people are happy to kind of get involved in things if you're teaching them a skill or giving them an experience, getting them industry contacts, then they're maybe not going to be asking to kind of uh, you know be paid for contributions. Mm. It's just making sure there is some kind of value that you can offer yeah, that. Yeah, and they're ways. not just making the tea, they're actually yeah. doing something that's really useful. And I think there's a lot you can run yourselves as well, mm. and you know, insight sessions and just asking questions and, and, and getting that insight yourself. Yeah, um, yeah. I think, you know, obviously with the boundaries of you, you need procedures in place as yeah. well, but there's a lot you can do yourself. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, exactly what you're saying. Um, to be honest, our projects are, can be considered quite expensive, but that's not to say that in terms of engaging with the young people, you need to actually have a lot of money to actually get them involved. It is down to the value exchange. If they see there's a clear value for them, then ultimately it doesn't really, money is necessarily a motivating factor. And I also think if you are going to engage with them, there's also other means than just getting them in. Let's say a setting, the social media, this technology today, that yeah. actually help you find out a lot out there without even needing to reach out directly to a young person. Could you could you maybe say a bit more about the how you could use social media? Yeah, yeah. so for instance, in our context, uh, in market research, there's a lot of interesting tools called social listening tools that allow you to scrape the internet and find out conversations that people are having essentially about a specific topic. So if it's about a new event, a live event that's going to happen, you don't have to engage with young people directly. You can just see online. You can see it all happening. About, all yeah, happening yeah. Live, which, which maybe 20, 30 years ago wouldn't necessarily yeah, yeah, be the yeah. case. So. so go to where they are. Rather than exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And I think it's interesting because we're kind of focusing, we've been focusing more on the inside kind of side of things and how you can get young people's ideas and opinions yeah. in your work. I guess the other side we would about to say is just attracting yeah. the audience yeah. into your work. And I guess, again, with marketing costs, it doesn't have to be really expensive. Like we've talked about authenticity. So you could spend a lot of money making a series of video, mm -hmm. like amazing videos mm -hmm. that go on YouTube. We all know that YouTube is really important for young people. But if they're not, you know, actually, maybe it would have been better to kind of make a series of viral pieces created by young people very cheaply mm. that taps into an insight, and that will travel as opposed to kind of spending something yeah. really glossy and kind of. And word of mouth is so important yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. So that's something that you can't fake. But that for. insight thing's really important, isn't it? Because what we're talking about, really, if you get down to the nub of it, is no, you, we were talking before we started yeah. about actually. You can't, it's kind of as simple and as complicated as you give them what they want. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you, you, that's how you, that's how, for any audience, you know, if they see something that they want, then they will engage with it, obviously. Exactly. Exactly. So the insight thing is really key because that's how you understand, begin to understand, and, and also, you know, scraping social media, like you were saying, that's how you begin to get a sense yeah. of people's behaviours, what, what works, that sort of thing. I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you not about something this afternoon, so you have to talk with an answer later before you do. So but, <laughs> but I'm thinking lots of people will be sitting here saying, "Well, how do we do that? How do we do an insight session?" So I'm wondering if, as your homework from today, I can be really cheeky and not just ask you for time now, but afterwards as well, if you could maybe between you kind of come up with some sort of tips for how to run a successful insight session. Yeah. Because I think I suspect there's probably a real skill to it. Yeah. Um, so it would be great if you wouldn't mind doing that. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Sorry, that's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> so having done that, I suspect I'm about to get a wallop. Um, it's probably time for another video so that I can run away. Um, this um, this video is one that we didn't make actually. It was made by uh, Michael Noonan, who um, we've known for a long time, and who is brilliant because he goes around the country doing amazing work with lots of different arts organisations and he captures video wherever he goes. So this is a piece that he made back in 2010, actually, featuring a woman called Charlie Kemp, who works for a network of venues in Lincoln called uh, Lincolnshire One. And this is Charlie talking about what she's learned about how to work with young people successfully. And uh, not surprisingly, it's called Lessons About Involving Young People. Great, so we've been joined now again by Jenny, who uh, has been keeping an eye on social media while we've been uh, chatting away. Jenny, is there anything that is coming up? Uh, well, one of the things that people want to know about is price and whether price, uh, how much price plays a role in barriers to attendance at live events. 
don't know if you've got any Maybe. thoughts on that. Definitely. We, um, so something we've done really recently at the Roundhouse, um, just it's coming up just over a year, is um, we've launched a cheaper ticketing scheme. Uh, we have, um, we noticed we had, you know, over 3,000 young people were engaging with every year, and yet the numbers that we see kind of crossing over from our opportunities and our projects into going to see the gigs were really, really small. We just weren't seeing that crossover. We did do a little bit of research, and price was definitely the, the primary barrier. The other, obviously, is it's that thing about programming what young people want to see. You can't force someone to go and see a, a sure. musician that they're not interested in, but um, we worked really hard to sort of, it's, it's been it's been quite challenging, but we've now got a scheme in place that offers a limited amount of five pound tickets to 16 to 25 year olds, um, and we've made those available for um, for any gigs that really we can get that allocation for. And it's been a really successful scheme. We've see, seen I mean membership started with about 900 uh, 18 no 16 to 25 year olds um, who would just use our studios regularly. But it's already sort of grown to 3,000 young people now who've signed up and are coming in and sort of using the opportunity to see gigs. So I think price is actually really important. Anything to tender that you would? Uh, I'm not uh, too against the market, but I guess it comes down to what you're saying, that, that you have to have something that they want to be excited about and go and see. And sometimes if there is that, then they are willing to make an extra investment much more than mm. we do. I mean, I remember when I was much younger, there were certain artists and certain acts that I got really excited about that I saved up for to go and see. And it's about creating that buzz and obviously a bottom-up strategy rather than top-down. Yeah. Yeah. And that very much comes through in some of the comments we've had about how important validation by your peers is. Mm. So that whole word of mouth recommendation or seeing people like yourselves at those venues or on the stage um, is something else people have been commenting mm. about, I think. Mm. That, that sort of brings something up that's been going through my mind that, that um, I've, you know, in my previous life I worked at a venue, I was involved in marketing, and uh, I, as sort of as a matter of course, would work involve young people in, in the work that I was doing, but I was obviously a bit younger then. So the question that's been going through my mind, particularly as I went around the roundhouse last, last week, and I was like, God, we're really old. Um, sorry, a bit of a confessional going on here, but but I'm just curious because I know that you know there are lots of there'll be lots of people watching this now or watching it in the future who'll be thinking, do I need to have young do I need to have got young people involved already in order for them to go and talk to young people, picking up what you said about peers, or you know can you do this? Can you be convincing? Can you make a connection with young people and involve them in your work if you're I don't know in your 50s or older or you know do you have to be a kid? It doesn't really take one to know one, I suppose. Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's interesting. You tend to find, I wonder if, if naturally those roles do tend to, you know, when you're directly trying to engage young people in your organisation, tend to go to kind of people who, who are younger. We have a youth engagement officer role at the Roundhouse, which is Cecilia actually who was on uh, one of the videos earlier. and. Um, I think it's you know it's a great entry level role in terms of kind of sort of starting off in in an art career and, and working in youth engagement and to see this brilliant at it because equally she has got connections in the studio she she's very easily able to kind of communicate and and also kind of represent it's kind of a two way channel of communication if that makes mm. sense so we're kind of trying to you know get our messages across but equally she can feed back and say well this is what I'm hearing all the time and I guess she gets that mm. honesty from the studios I don't think young people are resistant to engaging with people from different ages but it, maybe it just makes things a bit mm. easier yeah. Um, I mean, we haven't had too much experience in that context, but I mean, we have worked with clients and brands that, in a similar context, I guess, they feel that their brand can be seen as quite old, and it's hard for them to actually get cut through through to the youth market. And sometimes what they've done is actually approach what we call young influencers in that mm. space to help them boost the word about something um, that might be interesting to young people. So call kids on the block as they were to actually involve and get them to get that buzz. And that's one way they've got around the problem. Um, so there's some guys on YouTube, Instagram, some big stars that they actually start talking to to say, can you push out a message out there and will you get some excitement rather than yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah. But again, the key thing there needs to be about, there needs to be a value exchange. There needs to be value 
again for the young people and yeah. to see that there is that value for them. To be so perhaps the answer for arts organisations is to, is to find you know two or three young people that have got a connection already yeah. with what you're doing and yeah. then use them to kind of start that, exactly. that conversation exactly. and they might be I don't know I'm thinking so they might be children of people that are on the board or they might be people that are coming regularly already yeah, maybe or box office assistants, box office assistants. Um, yeah. that kind of thing um, people will just yeah regular friends of friends yeah. yeah just think naturally just think about those sort of connections that so, we've all got but yeah. we often forget okay Jenny anything anything else um, uh, just one more comment really was how much of venues themselves that we are all used to, arts venues, how much of, can they be a barrier mm -hmm. to young people? <laughs> <laughs> Big question, sorry. And so this is more kind of just the actual stepping inside. Yeah, initial. I think so. I think it is a really massive, uh, it is a massive barrier and it's difficult. I think, you know, that is one thing that's really easy to forget that kind of first time you go into the arts venue and it's all shiny and kind of impressive and it is hard to break that down. Um, I guess you've got to just try and make your space as inviting as possible. Um, we find, I mean, we have this independent uh, ticket scheme and that is great for getting, this the £5 scheme, sorry, the, the cheaper tickets, that is great for getting independent young bookers in, but we recognise as well there's certain groups of young people maybe from more challenging backgrounds or um, where that scheme isn't going to work for them and it's actually pretty much impossible to try and sort of like expect them to just come over through the door themselves and that's where it's about working with organisations, offering group entry deals, trying to get them in and sort of you know, get them in with a referral agency or something like that because you're, it's just too kind of much to expect them to come in by themselves. Yeah. And then I guess once you've had that first experience and it's been positive, it's then following up and giving them more opportunities to engage and then it just has become normal. Mm. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is all about seeing yourself and you know, see, recognising yourself in those audiences or in other yeah. people in the building, that sort of thing. Yeah, I get, yeah, yeah, it definitely helps, definitely mm. helps. Yeah. And also on stage, one of the um, videos that we didn't show today but you can watch on our YouTube channel, um, is another snippet of an interview with Zena and Troy, and they talk about actually uh, really enjoying gigs where there's an element of performance by their peers as well. So you might be going to see a headline act, but there's an opportunity for up and coming yeah, young really people nice, yeah. to perform, and that just helps again to sort of break down those barriers, mm. whether mm. they're perceived or real. No, definitely, <clears throat> definitely. And it sort of feels like a really nice opportunity. I probably shouldn't say this, but I guess sometimes you sort of have that sense with a music gig where the support act people aren't, you know, it's, mm. they're not really that interested. Mm. But if you can give that opportunity to an up and coming band and there's, you know, they can bring a different audience in, it's a really yeah. nice opportunity for them. Um, I guess it's still while managing audience expectations. So we actually do allow those opportunities for our resident artists, but we're quite you know, clearly put the messaging around that saying, you know, these are great emerging talents and you know, just you've got to, Audience yeah, and a year's time you'd be fail. killing yourself that you weren't here to see them before <laughs> they became. Well, almost that. But and just kind of making audiences aware that you know the worst thing you don't you don't want to sort of have audience members coming in and being like, oh, well, that was you know not what I was expecting. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. So just managing that. Yeah. Okay. Um, we talked earlier about not all young people being the same and the perils of generalising. So of course that's about what I'm, that's exactly what I'm about to ask you to do. Um, so to sort of wrap things up, um, the, the third thing I wanted to talk about today was if we've, if, we've, if we've nailed the how we get young people involved and we've got them working for us and, and with us and they're involved in all our planning, what from your experience is most likely to work in terms of persuading young people to, to come along to the to, to music events. So it's slightly probably outside of the usual stuff that you're doing to take a But I think you've you've got a sort of a maybe a more sort of scientific approach. Yeah. And so I wondered from from your point of view if there were aspects of young people's behaviour or um, things that persuade them that maybe music organisations could could learn for us. There were maybe two or three characteristics that you wanted them to be aware of. What would they be? Um, I guess I guess it comes down to a couple of things in terms of if you look at the way young people are today and the way they've grown up. That's quite different to say older generations. First of all, the access to information mm. and the 
sort of the, the need to want to know as much as possible. So uh, as you know, I think nowadays companies and brands and organizations have been much more transparent than they were before. And that's something that really needs to come across in your messaging and, and, and what you say to them. But I also think in terms of the word persuasion, it's, it's not so much about persuasion as I guess more about engagement. So persuasion is very much top down and that used to be a very traditional way to market or attract people to do something to the tell so. But nowadays it's much more about collaboration sort of a bottom up approach. And I mean in terms of advertising never you see it's not so much about saying we want you to do this, but actually more about getting people that you're trying to attract to be involved in that process and actually finding out what they want and then getting those messages across. I don't know if I'm, does that make mm, sense? Yeah, yeah. Totally. So that's something that we do a lot of work around for some of the clients we work with to actually understand what we call ultimate human truths and the truths that actually will touch base and be quite um, interesting and, and have resonance with people today, essentially. Mm. So it's not so much about this value and this product and service, more about what value is there for you that will actually touch what matters to you internally. And that can only be done through a collaborative process rather than mm. a top-down process. Yeah, I yeah. feel I'm getting very academic here. No, no, it, makes, <laughs> it, makes, it makes absolute sense. It makes yeah. absolute, and particularly, you know, we're in a world where incrementally, yeah. like there's just so much more information exactly. out there. And, and I read somewhere the other day that in in 30 seconds, that there'll be more emails would have been sent than I don't know 10 years ago were sent in the yeah. whole year. Or so it's just, yeah. but, and and it's only going to get faster. Yeah. So you've got to find a way. I think what you're saying yeah. is you've got to find a way of cutting, cutting through. straight through and being the one that's different to everyone else. Essentially, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that goes down to listening to what interests them and what what matters yeah. to them, and that's tapping into the emotion. Right, yeah. Practical. So, would you say picking up on that that um, a real difference is that people, the people that you're working with, are more discerning. They absolutely know what they are interested in, and if you're even a shade off of that, you're not going to get there. To an extent, but you, I guess part of the process in terms of research, you have to go it out of them in a way. Sometimes people don't know what they want until you yeah, yeah. put them in a setting to actually try and see what they want. So there's different methodologies and tools you can use, such as behavioral economics and behavioral research, which actually looks at the way they behave. And you can sort of make inferences about what they actually are interested in rather than what they say they're interested in. Yeah. So there's a the next stage past yeah. just saying, what do you like? Actually, sometimes they yeah, will yeah. tell you what they like. I think venues come out of that. I remember when I worked at the, at the stables, we would ask people what kinds of music they were, they were interested in. And they would all say, oh, we're interested in classical music, we're interested in jazz. Yeah. And then you'd look at their booking history. <laughs> and all they did were pop gigs, exactly. but they just wanted to sound like a right person. So, Emily, anything from there that you you want to pick up on, or anything else that you would? Um, I guess I was just thinking about trying to do really practical tips for other venues and how mm. they can how can they can do this and, and get that kind of youth uh, in like we cut through yeah. message. Um, something we've done that's been really um, successful recently, our, our rising festival of um, emerging music. Uh, we um, developed some partnerships with several brands that are already kind of very involved in the youth music kind of world and, and sort of have a real kind of authenticity with that audience. So uh, we co-programmed um, a series of gigs including, um, sorry, with brands including uh, BBC Introducing and DIY Music Magazine. So, and that sort of was, you know, maybe, you know, sometimes there's kind of argument to say you don't have to have all the expertise or the, you know, in-house or maybe if you don't have that reputation already you could be working you why not work with someone who does have that and kind of collaborate and you can mm. you can sort of sort of get the benefits of that cut through of message and, and that insight as well mm. maybe mm. And, and thinking about the events that you that, that go on at the roundhouse and your attempt at getting young people to maybe attend things which they might not know that they like yeah. but, you know um, are there things that have worked for you in the past Totally put you on the spot. <laughs> so this is getting them to try new genres. Yeah, like we do this exactly. Kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, that's difficult. Um, I know that's why I asked you. <laughs> 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 um, I guess um, I'm just thinking about our program, which is um, our, our learning program. So where we're offering opportunities, and I guess where we've been able to work with again, like either brands or, or artists that kind of you know, kind of maybe the experience or the, or the, the course or the project that we're promoting, mm. promoting is actually something that is a bit outside the comfort zone, but is kind of working with, with sort of people that they're really interested in, then so maybe mm. that's the way you can start. Yeah, kind yeah. Of and you've talked about things. the pricing and, and the yes. way that the scheme 
has dealt with that. Is there anything about the way that the, either the messages that you are, you know, the messaging that you're using, or or the way that you're engaging with young people that's, that that is worth talking about? I mean, I'm not trying to lead you. I'm no, no, no. I think not at all. I think um, I guess it's just it's it's kind of just the way you communicate in general. So just very authentic communication, uh, very honest, quite straightforward, you know, quite visual is probably important as well, um, and definitely not waffly like I'm doing now. <laughs> Something that's kind of, you know, I guess, you know, in the world of social media and all this information, you have not much space to communicate, yeah. and to be honest, if you can't um, get your message across quickly, then yeah. it's obviously in, not. In a way, it's never been easier to say something and kind of get your message out there, it's harder than ever for people to take that on. To get, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. To get and so it's easier, the barriers to entry to say having a social media campaign or having an advert that goes somewhere is, is not hard. The problem is actually engaging with people. And that's the yeah. real trick to things, to actually get them to see what you're trying to do and actually say, actually, that's something I want to be involved in. Yeah, yeah. A large part of that is getting a buzz and actually really thinking about what interests them. And even generating that buzz is the same thing, isn't it? It's about getting them involved in it. It's motivating people yeah. to, 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 be mo to, to do some of that work for you, to be part of that marketing machine. Yeah. Um, that's, that's, I guess, the, the golden egg, isn't it, really, yeah. what we're trying to do. Okay, so this is the point where if everything had gone to plan this afternoon, we would have finished up with a really nice performance by Zena, who you heard earlier. Um, we've had a few technical issues this afternoon. Um, so Zena, if you're watching, I'm really sorry we can't show your video right now, but we will make sure that you, you get a, a link to it and that it's on the on-demand version of the Hub Chat. So um, what I'm going to ask you to do now, I'm just going to give you a 30-second warning. I'm going to talk really slowly now for 30 seconds. Um, I'm going to ask you to round off with um, if you if you wanted what if you wanted people that have been watching to go away with one either piece of advice or one really inspirational thought, something that you really want them to take away from this afternoon, so that people are inspired to go off and, and do this if they think it's the right thing to do. What would that be? What's the most useful thing they could take away from this afternoon? Um, Jenny, I'm not going to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and don't worry, obviously, you know, if you come up with something better later, we can just edit it in for the on-demand one, so don't worry, it's absolutely, absolutely fine. <laughs> <laughs> or you can write another piece for us where you come up with something. <laughs> Do you want me really to really busy, but off you go, Emily. It's that helpful. Yeah, um, I guess I was just thinking when you were speaking then, it's, it's not anything particularly practical, but I would just say that the best parts of my job are working with young people. and. You know, it's it's the kind of best part of coming up with marketing campaigns, or, or you know, it, it's so like it's so brilliant getting involved with some really exciting, fresh energy, and sort of sitting down and you know, starting to try and tackle these problems. And I, yeah, it it's, it shouldn't be daunting at all. It's it's actually really really brilliant way of working. So, Just jump in. Yeah, have a go. And you'll you know get so much out of it. And yeah, yeah. Um, I guess. From my, side, from my standpoint, I guess it's not to come off seriously, but it's always important to sort of understand and make an effort to understand who they are and not just assume one size fits all for young people. Yeah. That's probably the biggest thing that comes out of the work that we do. They really are not the same. You can't have the same uh, sort of strategy in trying to get them involved and interested. So try and get inside, get to the number <laughs> segment them a little bit in whatever way that you can. Yeah, exactly. Not just yeah. necessarily using us, just what yeah, yeah. you can. And I think you know sometimes from a music organisation's point of view, you can think, God, how on earth do I do that? I don't yeah. have, I, I don't have access to a, an agency. One of the things that I think, you know, really valid piece of audience research, just stand and look yeah. at who's in your building, yeah. see how they behave, yeah. you know, that sort of thing. Is that valid? Do you think? Go, yeah, go to other events that you know other organisations are putting on, and just see what young people are interested in, and those are what they do. That I guess. Great. In the mix, I guess. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for coming down this afternoon. Really, really appreciate it. Um, our next Hub Chat is going to be on the 27th of March, so in a, in a month's time. And we're just finalising the panellists for that. So, but if you want to know about what's going to be happening, then uh, do follow us on Twitter or do go to our website, and there's a little button on the home page which says join our community. So if you do either of those two things, we will make sure that you, you know what we're going to be doing next month. 
Um, I just want to say a few thank yous. I wanted to thank Emily and Tatenda again for coming. I wanted to thank James, who you can't see, but is just over there, for doing all the tech stuff uh, this afternoon for us and for remaining calm under quite a lot of pressure around 10 past 1 this afternoon. It's all very red. Um, thank you to Kings and to Sophie uh, for helping us this afternoon and indeed for all their support on Joining the Dots. And thank you to the other funders, uh, to Arts Council England, to the Musicians Union, Esme Fairbairn Foundation and the English Folk Dance and Song Society. And of course, thanks to you for watching and for bearing with us in the face of a few technical hitches this afternoon. Thank you very much and hopefully see you next time.